Hello everyone, welcome back to Sawyer Studios. I'm Nathan Sawyer and here we go. So, if I started making a video playlist on my channel, let's say it was about, I don't know, parrots. Let's say some of my subscribers don't like parrots, don't like birds, maybe have a phobia to birds, you know? Don't want to see those thumbnails. Uh, or something of the sort, maybe they have a traumatic experience with birds. Maybe their bird just died. Maybe the only animal that's ever hurt them in their life are birds and they hate birds. Maybe they don't like the movie birds. I don't know. But if I start making a playlist about my love for parrots, would you unsubscribe from my channel? Now, I'm sure a few of you would. I'm sure, you know, there's reasonable explanations for that. But the majority of people who have a problem with birds probably wouldn't. They'd probably keep watching my content if they like my Lego content, my gaming content, any of the content that I generally pump out. I recently started a playlist last month of questions in Catholicism. That's very, uh, it's, it's been very slow. Uh, let's just say that much because it's, it's, uh, I'll be honest, it's not my main priority for my channel. My main priority for my channel is Lego first and then gaming. And after that, it's, the questions in Catholicism playlist that I have been pumping out. Um, there's two videos, you should uh, go check them out. They're sort of in the form of a podcast, more so just like general thoughts if you want to hear them. But if you don't like Catholics, you know, I'm Catholic. I think that is obvious since I started a playlist about Catholicism. But if you don't like Catholics, are you going to unsubscribe from my channel? Like, I mean, if you like my Lego stuff, if you like the mocks that I'm doing, the news that I produce, the fun little videos that I randomly do, if you like my gaming vids with Dean Machine and my other friends, are you gonna unsubscribe and stop watching my content just because I'm, po I'm one of my playlists, I'm posting content about Catholicism? This is the toxicity of what cancel culture is today. We take one aspect, no matter what the percentage is, it could be a huge percentage of this person, could be a little bit, and we just define that. We, we take that one thing and it defines their entire being. Let me just say, it's very convenient when you can cancel culture someone else, but when someone tries to cancel culture you, it's no longer, it's all oh, they don't understand or they're, they, they're looking at it from a different perspective, or you know they got it all wrong. I don't like to bring politics into my channel at all, uh, mainly because I consider myself neither Republican or Democrat. Um, I think both parties are corrupt, and I hold views from both uh, stances, from both systems. Uh, I just do not like structured, systematic political parties. Um, I have a really long explanation that I could go into that uh, centrals around John Dewey, a uh, great philosophist. Um, if you want to hear that, um, I don't know, comment down below. I'll, I'll maybe make a video about it. But uh, I don't want to go into politics in this channel because this channel is not about that. It's not about politics. However, something has creeped into the Star Wars world that I feel like I should address because it's pretty mainstream right now. And that is Cara Dune's character and the actress who plays her, Gina Carano. Uh, she's recently been fired from Lucasfilm and stripped of her actress agency or whatever, and has been picked up by the Daily Wire pretty much for her recent and string of conservative um, lean in tweets. The one that really set over the edge, and this is not the tweet, it wasn't just like one tweet and then they fired her. This has been boiling for a long time. She's been apparently tweeting a lot of different stuff that I've been doing research on, but the tweet that really pushed her over the edge was this tweet that she made, or um, I guess it was a tweet. Uh, it was about her comparing, I should probably just read it rather than summarize because I hate summarizing. I could probably get something wrong. So I'm just gonna read it. Uh, this is what she wrote. Um, Jews were beaten in the streets, not by Nazi soldiers, but by their neighbors, even by children. Uh, frowny face emoji. 
In quotes, because history is edited, most people today don't realize that to get to the point where Nazi soldiers could easily round up thousands of Jews, the government first made their own neighbors hate them simply for being Jews. How is that any different from hating someone for their political views, end quote? And then she accompanied it with a picture of, um, it looks like Jewish people getting beat in the street, something like that, <laughs> or yelled at. I'm not quite sure what's going on, but so, now, if you were to take that tweet, now, obviously, there's some connotations there, and uh, the actress very well knew what connotations would have been, would have been taken um, by that tweet. Pretty much, uh, this is her describing what she sees from her perspective of this time and what's going on. That is, conservative views are becoming more and more taboo um, Republican leaning, right wing, whatever you want to call it, views are becoming more and more taboo in society today. Um, as a couple of my people who I know who are in um, the financial business, uh, I've talked to a lot. Uh, they're very wise, and we, uh, last time we were having a conversation, they talked about how America is sort of leaning towards not a two party system, but a one party system. Uh, and they're doing that through this sense of cancel culture of aligning everyone's beliefs to one party. Uh, and if you don't, that's not okay. Um, these beliefs are created and determined by a group of people. Um, it's very, and they're pushing the, the um, principle of equity, not equality, but equity, which are two different things. Gina is speaking out against particularly people who hate on or shut down people who have right-wing views simply because they have right-wing views. Um, and she's also speaking out against the political leaders that mainly left side, progressive, liberal leading, uh, leaning that are encouraging the, I guess you call it the alienation of, uh, of right-wing conserv conservative people, which, you know, you can't say you could say as much that these leaders are pushing for the left to speak out against these people the same way you could probably compare the fact that Trump incited violence at the Capitol building. It's the same. It's probably the same thing you could look at it. Um, Trump didn't explicitly say, go out, attack the Capitol building. Uh, left leaders don't explicitly say, you know, don't like people who have these um, bigoted views of the right. But nonetheless, you watch any left media, um, listen to the speeches given, and it's pretty much as insightful as Trump inciting violence at Capitol Hill. So, you know, I look at this tweet and I don't see any neo-Nazi propaganda that the media has been claiming uh, that she's using here, pretty much what she's using is a comparison, what she thinks um, is happening in this country and how it might be, it, I would agree, probably hyperbolic and extreme. Um, I don't see like America turning into a Nazi-esque regime. However, um, well, the left would probably tell you otherwise. Um, now we have people of the left saying that, you know, Trump is like Hitler, ICE comparing them, the, the police force ICE comparing them to uh, Nazis and the um, locking like children in cages compared to concentration camps. And now we have the right uh, talking about the, the lead up to what Nazism became and the uh, elimination and the um, alienation, the uh, segregation of Jews and comparing that to uh, conservatives. Do I think either side is right? No, definitely not. Um, if you know anything about logical fallacies, ad Hitlerum is like the one I remember the most because it's just a logical fallacy to compare something to Hitler. It's not a good argument. I think it's a poor argument. Um, will we ever get back to that place? Possibly, but even so, even if you think that I think it's very ill for any type of argument or comparison to be used with anything to do with Nazi Germany or Hitler. Um, here's the point about cancel culture. 
you make a post that people don't agree with and then you know you're kind of gone <laughs> um so disney has done this you know they obviously she's been tweeting a lot of conservative leaning stuff disney is is definitely more progressive leaning than conservative leaning um by far and so they didn't they don't like that and so they let go of an actress now you know from a from a certain viewpoint you could say well you know disney private owned uh, private owned company uh, is allowed to do that, you know, if it doesn't match what they like, then they're allowed to do that because, you know, a privately owned business, they can do whatever they want, you know, it's a free country. Um, but you start finding some paradoxes in this. So, you know, Disney is a free company, you know, privately owned. Um, and if they don't like this, they can do what they want. You know, it's their right to fire someone. Who does something like that <laughs> now if you're talking about free you know free country you know freedom to do what you want we also have the constitution which protects underneath free speech now free speech has been something that i feel like has been a very very difficult topic um throughout the past years uh there's obviously you know the clause where you know free speech is limited um, you can't yell fire in a movie theater if there is no fire. Um, that's like, that's just disturbing the peace and you're probably going to be arrested. Uh, so freedom of speech has its limits. But that's freedom of speech when you're lying, uh, where it's not okay. I think the fact that we are starting to move in a nation where if a company or a business or an organization doesn't like what you say or do or something, they can just let you go and it's fine. There's no protection of freedom of speech anymore. It's freedom to say what you want as long as the people up above approve of it. We are restructuring the elite class. And the elite class of the future is no longer going to be people who are rich. The elite class of the future are going to be those who hold social power. It's no longer about business. It's about social status now. The people of the future who are going to have the most power are going to be those who are the most woke. It's not going to be people with the most money because you can have as much money as you want, but if people aren't going to agree with you like to say, um, what you say, then you're going to be canceled. The point I'm trying to make is that you cannot straight up cancel someone because of something they've done in the past. And I know this was recent and this was current, but this extends, it doesn't matter if it's current. It could have happened 10 or 20 years ago and it's still looming over you. The, the thing is somewhere along the line, we have forgotten that all of us are sinful. Um, and coming from a Catholic standpoint, um, in order for us to have actual progress, we need to start forgiving people. We need to start caring for everyone. Um, we can't continue to foster this nature of hate. We can't. We cannot demonize a side. Um, the right constantly demonizes the left on social media and on their media. The left constantly demonizes the right on media and social media. And it's wrong. It's just wrong. You cannot you cannot make one side look evil to try to get people to your side. It's not about unity. It's about a competition. Who will be the one that's more, with, uh, excuse me, withstand it? So we've just somewhere along the line forgotten how to separate the sin from the sinner. If you look at Richard Wagner, I'm going to use this uh, as an example because I am a classical music nerd and I'm going to graduate school for conducting in orchestra music. Um, Richard Wagner, one of the best opera composers and one of the most profound composers of the Romantic period, like hugely just impactful to classical music world as we know it, to everything, to, to even movie soundtracks, to staging, to Broadway. He has affected so much throughout the course of history. One of the biggest pivotal composers ever, and he was an anti-Semitic. And a lot of his music was used during Hitler's regime for Nazi propaganda. And he also agreed with a lot of Nazi Nazi um, stances. Um, he did not like the Jews. Um, 
I'm sure if he was alive during Hitler's time, he would have been a Nazi. How do we balance between that? Who is he? He's an awesome opera composer. Can we just focus on the fact that he's given the classical music world so much? If it wasn't for Richard Wagner, your movie soundtracks would sound so dull. I'm not even joking. Like, they would be crap. They would be li literally the so crap. He invented the leap motif. Um, it, he's inspired John Williams' music, who was a huge forerunner of the soundtrack and how that evolved. Um, without, Richard, without Richard Wagner, you can bet your, I don't know, bet everything that movies and TV shows today, not really TV shows, more so movies today, would just be awful um, music-wise. It wouldn't have the same effect. But Wagner was an anti-Semitic. Yeah. We need to start looking at people like Wagner, amazing composer, amazing musician. Was his views off? Yeah, they were. Not good. Not good views, man. It's not okay to be anti-Semitic. Uh, that's just objectively speaking. That's not good. But if we were to completely cancel all of Wagner, we would miss so many of his operas, of his works. Tristan und Isolde, one of his most famous works, is su it's such a beautiful piece. And you have to ask yourself, you know, how can a man who's an anti-Semitic write such beautiful music? It's because that part of him doesn't translate over to the composer. It doesn't matter. If you are an anti-Semitic, you can, you can write music at just as good as someone who isn't. Now, are you the same? Are you, are you going to be the, like, can you be as nice as the person who isn't? Probably not. Definitely not towards Jews. But that doesn't feed into one's musical capabilities. Cara Dune, uh, sorry, Gina Corona is an amazing actress, very talented, very capable actress. Um, and now she's been canceled because of a tweet she's made. The fact that she is obviously conservative or at least right leaning should not affect the fact of, is she a good actress? Can she play the part? When we start looking, this is when the quality of our stuff goes down. When we start looking at things like outside personal life, rather than what are we interviewing, auditioning for this position right here. If you had a row of actresses that you wanted to play a part, you were trying to make a really good movie. You know, you're the director, producer, whatever, and you're interviewing them, and 19 of the 20 actresses are complete crap. Like, you don't even know how they got there. But one actress is brilliant, like the best acting you've ever seen. Like, award-winning actress. But they don't like, um, I don't know, uh, let's say that, yeah, they also tweeted something uh, like Gina did. Now, it's because of cancel culture. If you were to take that actress on, People would boycott you, probably the studio, probably the business you work with, because, oh my gosh, how dare you hire someone who has those views? She was the best actress for the job, so she should get the actress position. And that should be the only thing that matters in those stances. Obviously, it's not the way that uh, this world works, but in my opinion, that's the only thing that should matter. Are you good at what you're doing and what you're trying out for? If you are, you've got it. Nothing else matters. You know, there was a time where cancel culture existed in America as well. And that was like the 1800s, early 1900s. Are they a woman? Are they black? If so, they don't get it. There was a lot of smart women and smart African-American people in our history who did not get the chance to get a job or a position because of their skin tone simply because of their skin tone. It didn't have anything to do with their capabilities, their talents. They could have been the best mathematical minds, but it was given to a white male because, yes, in the history of our nation, we were very racist. Now, we're not being racist. We're being, I don't even know what this word is. 
we're not judging people on their skin tone. Or oh, Disney's not, sorry, Disney's not, okay, yes, there's still racists out there, but Disney isn't judging people by their skin tone. Disney is judging them by their beliefs. I don't know what word that is, but, but it's just a new form of discrimination. I'm not going to hire you, not because you can't act, but because I don't agree with what you're saying with this. You think that when companies started to hire black actors, you know, people didn't like that? Do you think everyone was just like, oh yeah, like a light, a switch turned on one night and they're like, yeah, sure, this is okay. No, when you look at like the, the integration of African-Americans into like public school systems, uh, what was her name? I think Rudy, I think her name was, um, was the first African-American girl to be integrated into a white school. Oh, there was protests, there were riots, everyone was pissed off. <laughs> but the school didn't care, even though the teacher, some of the teachers still treated her very racistly and awfully. Um, there's a great movie about it, I don't know what it is, but it was a phenomenal movie about this story. Very brave girl. Her teacher didn't care that she was African-American versus white. She saw her grades and she was super smart. She got A's in everything. True story. First year in that school, even with all that pressure, with all the racism towards her, within the hostile environment, she got straight A's. Even though people did not like it, the school still did it because it was the right and objective thing to do. So Disney, from a Star Wars fan standpoint, I don't even want to know what you're trying to figure out how you're going to kill her or get her out of the story. I don't even know. I don't even want to know. Because whatever it is, it's going to be awful. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to hate it. I'm going to hate when Mandalorian Season 3 comes out and you're going to give us some bullcrap excuse of where Cara Dune goes. Or you're going to use CGI and cop out. Which, by the way, please stop using CGI. That's a whole other discussion. But I hate it when you use CGI. It's awful, it sucks, it's stupid. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Anyway, <laughs> so, I mean, Dis I know you're not going to, and I mean, no one from Disney's gonna hear this video, um, but Disney, all I have to say is if somehow, somewhere, you hear this, <laughs> it's not okay. And this is to any company who's, this is to anyone who's thinking this way. It's not okay to cancel someone, to fire someone, if you do not agree with what they believe. It's not okay. It's okay to fire Cara Dune if she was a sucky actress and started, like, just awful acting. That's fine. It's not okay um, if it has nothing to do with her job. <laughs> Because we've seen businesses do that in the past. Firing people, cutting their wages, simply because they were women, or simply because they were of a minority and not white. And I'm seeing through your lies right now. So. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, this is Story Studios. Uh, you can like, comment, and subscribe here to get the latest from all of my videos coming out on this channel. Um, thank you for watching this extremely long video. I'm sure by the end of it, I have not been timing myself. I did not write anything down. This is just my thoughts on what's happening uh, with the actress Gina. Um, it's unfortunate. I don't know what Mandalorian Season 3 is going to be like. I'm a little bit uh, less excited for now, to be completely honest and fair. Um, but yeah, so if, you, if any of you, my viewers, know anyone in which you want to cancel culture, Please don't, because the only way people are going to change isn't by canceling them, it's by showing them love and having conversations and discussions on why they believe this and why you don't believe this. Firing is never the solution, and honestly, it's kind of the new form of discrimination. So, see you all in the next video.